Uh, yeah, hi, this is Tony. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays with Bionic Does. You can see we got a lot of uh, Waithia right here. Waithia and Plexicolis. See, it's doing pretty good. Makes me feel better about the fact we had to tear up about, I don't know, a four foot by six foot uh, area yesterday of Waithia to uh, to get at the, the ashy volcanic tuff that was so fossiliferous below. Look at this buckwheat. Ariagonum heracloides. Got the whirl around the stem. Little white umble. Little white umble of tiny flowers up top. The ants don't like it when I do that. They're all over this thing. What are they doing on there? And family on this guy. Egg is stitch. Yeah, got a big got a big old bumblebee back there. Those opposite leaves. Square stem. You don't always have a square stem in a mint family, but a lot of times you do. Those opposite leaves are the giveaway, though. And, of course, that inflorescent structure. A bunch of tiny flowers whirled around the stem. It's technically a spike, but see how they're whirled? Huh? And, of course, the smell. Oh, that's pleasant. That's nice. Some forocarpus right there. Honeysuckle family. Another opposite leaf bastard. Tiny uh, flowers already gone to fruit. So close to the, uh, so close to the clouds. Well, there's no clouds, never mind. Oh, you got one over there. Moon's still out too. Nice little rock garden there. Get your penstemons, get your areogonum. Here are cloides. Got your castilea. You got your calicortis, bruniunus. Those nice purple anthers. I wonder how old this formation is. See, this is the nice volcanics. This is the nice volcanics. Got some phenocris in there. Look at it. Those larger grains that just uh, were part of the uh, more finer grain, the matrix. We're rather we're, we're embedded in a more finer grain matrix, and you get the dead horse tuft down there. Thophotholiferous. Oh, hollow discus! How exciting! Look at all that. That's pretty nice. That's pretty good. It's like a sunset over the uh, train yard in West Oakland. <laughs> At least it was nice when we were working there. You know, beautiful, uh, the light pollution plus the fog off the ocean just gave it this really wonderful tint. All those oranges and purples and pinks and what, sh what the shit. Probably uh, the diesel exhaust had something to do with it too. Anyway, here we go. If Iliam the Rivularis. The mountain hollyhock. I love this plant. Never get tired of seeing it. Occurs sporadically. And it tends to come up after a wildfires too. But the, in reality, the seeds don't necessarily need wildfire. They certainly benefit from it. But they can lay dormant in that soil for uh, decades. And then, uh, who knows? For whatever reason, the uh, germination inhibitors get uh, get degraded. Whether maybe they need a little scarification. Maybe it just uh, maybe it is just heat. Could be heat. I mean, it gets so so hot some days on this uh, volcanic talus. Maybe that does it. I don't know. But either way, suddenly it'll germinate. You get a new plant. And like many members of Malvasi, uh, these are likely self-fertile. So uh, one plant, one or two plants is all you need to get, you know, thousands of seeds. And they're perennial, so it'll keep coming back. Eventually, they kind of tend to taper off. You know, at least Iliam the Bakerite, too. That's another cool species you get. Get that in California. It's got much more, uh, much many more hairs in the leaves. More of those stellate trichomes. I mean, the whole goddamn calyx would be fuzzy. Just fuzzy like, you know, fiberglass. Not even really fuzzy. Fuzzy implies that it's kind of soft and nice. When in actuality, uh, Iliamna bakeri is more like a, got a fiberglass thing going on. Cool genus, though, Iliamna. You get that really rare one in that island in Kankakee County, Illinois. That almost got choked out by invasives until a bunch of uh, volunteers stepped in last decade or two to do prescribed burns and weed out the invasive species, the invasive honeysuckle and whatnot. 
anyway there you go there's the uh, intermountain flora's version of uh, iliamna one of them iliamna rivularis the mountain hollyhock look at that flower look at those stamens in there dark purple anthers on white filaments and then of course somewhere in that clusterfuck of stamens is that the uh, stigma you can see a couple lobes of it there see those little white uh, hair looking things without the dark purple anthers on them palmate leaves they, these got trichomes on them too but again nowhere near as many as uh iliam the baker eye look at the sparkly shit those are the trichomes see that and here's a nice illustration of the differences between two very look-alike plants. Two very similar plants in the Asteraceae, the, the uh, composite family. Okay, right here you got the Balsamoriza, Balsamoriza sagittata, ta ta ta. There's actually one with the small uh, colline leaf there. You got leaves on the uh, on this the flowering stem there. You call that a colline leaf. They normally don't have that. They got tiny ones. See that? The reason I point that out is because it's, it's important when we're going to be looking at the uh, plant that this plant tends to look alike. Anyway, there you go. Balsamoriza sagittata. Look at those leaves. Look at that. Uh, they got earlobes at the base of them. See that? And they're kind of woolly. All right. Look at the uh, involucre. Look at all that wool. Holy shit. Very woolly. Now let's step down here and look at the, their, their look alike. Right here you got the Waithia. Waithia and Plexicolis. Also has colline leaves. See that? Got leaves on that stem, but they're much bigger. They're not reduced. They're much bigger. They're more prominent. Look, you got a guy in there. Look at that guy. Anyway, and uh, more importantly, too, look at how glabrous it is. See, it's shiny. No wool on there. Okay? This just has a thick coating of wax. A thick coating of wax. Just look at the involucre. Ooh, much bigger bracts and no wool. Much bigger bracts and no wool. But for the genus Wyethia, that's a common giveaway. You got, you got relatively large leaves, uh, relatively large colline leaves, large uh, leaves going up that uh, shoot right there. Okay, whereas the balsam rise just has a flowering stuck this is more of an actual uh call line shoot so but you'll see these throughout the intermountain west both these plants all right they got medicinal purposes and what the shit i think sure i think there was uh something with the root of that you know you get some mange or something you got a skin rash you take the root cut little pieces off and just rub it in there i don't know what the shit maybe haven't had to do that wouldn't put it past me though. You know, if I was stuck out here castaway style with just uh, Jack and a giant bag of beef jerky, say I got an ass rash because I got mange. We were hanging out with a coyote too or something, you know, or I, I touched some poison oak. Maybe it's good for poison oak. I don't know. Reduces inflammation. But certainly those roots, especially this is the Waithia now too, those roots do stink. I've, I've dug around them before and they've, they've got some, you could tell they got some nice, uh, some nice secondary chemistry in there. Anyway, there you go. Balsamoriza sagittata and Waithia and Plexicolis. What a quaking aspen. Such a soothing sound. Hey, look, we just got a little stream on the side of the road. Got a new Castilea species, a new uh, paintbrush species. I hadn't seen that yet. Some uh, Erythrant guttata. Ooh. It's kind of a, oh, it's a nasty smell too. Not just a nasty sound, but a nasty smell. There's that Castilea, that paintbrush. Look at all the glands on that. Peel that brack down. Look at that flower. There's the individual flower. You got your stigma poking out of there. You got a couple stamens all withered right in there as well. So glandular. And look at that. There's stream bank orchid, Platanthera dilatata. Dilatata. Look at a curved spur. Look at a curved spur. Platanthra is a pretty cool genus, very species rich. Again, another one of those genera, you got many species out west, but you generally see them coming up uh, in the wet areas. There used to be a genus called Piperia, which you didn't get in wet, the wet areas, you just get it coming up in the duff and conifer forest, probably heavily mycorrhizal, but then it later got merged 
Fucking lumpers, man. Taxonomic lumpers. What dicks? Got merged into Platanthera. And that uh, Erythranth Gutata, that yellow monkey flower you always get. You get in the seeps too. Just like this poisonous bastard, the corn lily. Melanthiaceae. These aren't uh, blooming yet, but the flowers when they go off are spectacular. Let's go take a look. The corn lily. <laughs> corn. Really? It's just a monocot. I guess, you know, if you don't know plants, yeah, maybe it's corn. I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Kind of looks like corn. Big leaves with parallel venation. But there's the flowers. Look at that. Mmm, is it good for anything? Can you do anything with it medicinally? Yeah, sure. It's, uh, it's toxic. Maybe you could figure out something to do with it. You know, you got anybody you want to poison? Look at those bracts. Look at those large bracts subtending uh, those, uh, those inflorescences. Well, this is a whole inflorescence, but these inflorescence branches right there. The whole thing's... A... It doesn't smell too bad either. It smells kind of good. Just don't eat any. Don't put it in your mouth. Look at the, look at the colors on the inside of that perianth. Six stamens, six petals, I guess the tepals in this case. Always a stunner to see. It's nice. Some geriatrics just drove by with a sheep herding dog. They were nice though, they waved. Had some guy yesterday, you know, driving around looking at the uh, writing down license plate numbers. Some of those, uh, you know, I, that's what I think. I think you know, it's nice to live in the cut, but some people, they, they've been in the cut too long. They don't intermingle with other human beings, they get super paranoid. All right, <laughs> whatever, you know, I don't know. Paranoid and proprietary. Look at this carrot. Nice member of the uh, APAC. When I say carrot, I just mean it's a member of the carrot family, not necessarily it's in the genus uh, Daucus. Looks like it's gone to fruit already, though. You can still see, you can still see the gynoecium, the pistil, the female part atop those fruits. There's the foliage down there. Relatively tall carrot. Look at that, and look at the striations on the branches, just like a just like a piece of celery, which uh, coincidentally enough is in the same family, Apiaceae. All right, let's keep looking for uh, the Basque sheep herder porn and head down here a little bit. Look, there's not carrot. Oh yeah, look at that. There's a there's the inflorescence is still up. Yes, yes. Is it medicinal? Mmm. What's medicinal uses? Okay. <laughs> Another another plant family that's just rife with toxic genera and species. Is it medicinal? Yeah, it's medicinal, all right. Prevents me from feeling like I need to commit homicide. That's how it's medicinal. Come on, let's go. Get down here. Look, just a little bit down the road, we got a seep. Huh? We got more potentilla. We got some epilobium. Evening primrose family. Huh? Just like the mustard family, you got flowers in... Uh, Numbers of four, multiples of four, four stamens in there, four petals. But uh, of course, uh, Ono Gracie has an, has an inferior ovary. Good graminoid, I'm going to uh, grossly overlook. Don't be offended. What do we got down here? Veronica? Another goddamn, uh, perhaps it's a, another uh, ranunculaceae. Just always got to check for ticks, you know? They're sporadic, but they're out here. You'll find them. Oh, here we go. Here's a nice mimulus. Let's see if we could find one in flower. Oh, it's so glandular. Look at it. You know what I mean? A monkey flower. Got now they're in an erythranth. Erythranth lewisii. That's a stunner right there. Opposite leaves. Giveaway for order lamialis. Not always, but often. Very glandular. Zygomorphic. That is bilaterally symmetrical corolla. That yeah, with a nice little pattern inside. If you flip it up, you could see. Those four stamens occurring in uh, two separate pairs. The dynamis stamens. And look at that style. Look at like a little white clam. And the keeled calyx of the monkey flowers. Oh, the fucking mosquitoes are out great. God damn it. Look how glandular it is. A very sticky, this is a sticky plant. Glandular trichomes. Hairs with glands on them. Fuck out of here. These mosquitoes are already getting to me. God damn it, there's no reprieve. Look at the corn lily. It's so medicinal. One of the most med... <laughs> Shouldn't say that. You never know. Some people take you seriously. No bad sheep herder porn down there, though. What a drag. Now, there's a tree that's a dead giveaway for uh, for altitude, for elevation. Subalpine fir.
Abies Lacio Carpa. Yeah, look how narrow these things are. Probably helps them not get broken in half by snow. Heavy snow loads. You just got a whole, uh, just a whole slope of uh, Facilia. Looks like Facilia Hastata. Very notable leaves on this bastard. Look, he's just, just big hit with the pollinators today. Just covered in the bees and the flies and with the shit. Look at this guy wiggle his ass. Can you sashay? Can you sashay for me? I knew this old crusty bastard that used to be a brakeman uh, for uh, Southern Pacific. And he used to always say that, sashaying. Look at all these. Actually, no, he was an engineer because he'd always be making fun of the brakeman. Saying, look at these brakemen sashaying around the yard like they're hot shit. Do you sashay? I'll, I'll sashay. I'll fucking sashay for you, you prick. So many plants named after Lewis. Speaking of pricks, Lewis was probably a prick. They had that slave with them. York was his name. They said, oh yeah, we'll set you free when we're done with this expedition. They never set his ass free. They just sold him again. Just fucking, God. You know, if you're going to name a plant after people, name it after the, name that, name after the guy that did all the work. Name it after all the manual labor. Name, that, name it after a York. Fuck Lewis. He was probably an asshole. Self-aggrandizing prick. Maybe he was sweet. Probably not. Maybe he was sweet, sweet. Maybe he knew how to bake and what this shit. I don't even know how to bake. I'll bake you a fucking pizza though, huh? You talk shit to me, come over to my house, we'll slap each other around. Then I'll make you a pizza, just so you know we're all good. There, all right, there you go. Subalpine fur, Abies, let's go, carpet, go fuck yourself. There we go, Oligocene Volcanics. Look at all that rhyolite. Roughly 30 million, 35 million year old rhyolite. I can't believe how hot it is at the 8,000 feet. Anyway, here's a plant. Uh, some of you probably know this one. Camerion angustifolium. Used to be a, used to be a epilobium. This is a plant colloquially known as fireweed. Another member of the evening primrose family. Look at that style. Look at the four lobes on that style. Ownagraciousbastards.com. Those stamens have already withered. And you got the inferior ovary. What looks like a stem right there is actually the fruit. And then when they mature, look at that. Look at look how the, those buds just drape. Look, they're just draping. So onagracious, such an onagracious habit. Shilismia does that. Some of the uh, Onothera do that. Anyway, when those fruits mature, they got all the, the poofy shit inside, the cottony fruits. And that's how, this, that's how this plant gets around. The seeds have that poof on them, that cottony shit, and they just blow around. Just blow around. They call it fireweed because it's thought that it normally comes up after fire. But you don't need fire for this guy. Not always. Certainly likes uh, the full sun, though. Certainly likes the disturbance. There's those leaves. Wonder why they split it. I haven't read the paper yet, but again, those, the, st the stigmas on these things. Again, stigma the female part. Remember, it's the pistol. Stigma style ovary. The female part of the flower. The gynoecium. Those stigmas on these always drive me nuts. Ooh, four lobes, four prominent lobes ready to catch that pollen. Again, not charismatic here, but I like it. One of the chicories. See those ligulate flowers with, look how tall those styles get. Those curly Q styles. Of course, five teeth. You can barely see them. Five teeth at the end of those ligules. Those daisy rays, what look like petals. Yeah, you can see the Waiithi is not having a hard time at all. It's doing very well. Doing very well for itself here. My friend, my friend May, the guy I was with, I don't know where he went now. He's up, traipsing up a fucking mountain somewhere. But he went down there yesterday, and that's a floating bog. That whole thing is floating. That What looks like an island in the center of it. He said there was beavers down there. He's seen them, uh, he's seen them swimming around. I got a beaver dam built down there. But uh, he said it was, uh, it was quite buggy. 
And, uh, you know, there was a lot of aquatic plants down there, but nothing really remarkable. So I'm not going to go down there. But I'll tell you about it. I heard it was nice. Why don't you come here and check it out? Yeah, so he, he had the way to cross that little narrows right there. Jump on the floating bog. It's not sphagnum. It's uh, some sort of uh, graminoid, aquatic graminoid. Then he was, you know, fucking around, dancing back and forth on that little island, the floating thing. You know, he said it was going up and down. So it was kind of sketchy. He said when you get to the edge, it's like 10 feet deep. But then he saw, you know, he saw the beaver. One of the beavers scared the shit of him, jumped off the floating island, was, you know, fucking around, swimming back and forth. I don't know what the beavers are doing. I don't know what they're doing. Are they getting paid to do that? They're like the guys on the, uh, on the I-55. It's always under construction, you know? They got to reduce to one lane from four, but whenever you drive by, they're not working. I don't know what they're doing. You know, slapping each other around, throwing cones at each other. Dick, I don't know what they're doing over there. Look at all that Waiuthi, though. God, it smells good up here. It smells so good. During the hottest summer on record. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Grandpa, don't worry. Come on, you don't believe in climate change. We can still be friends. Don't be such a don't be such a sensitive weenie. So thin skinned, huh? The floating bug. Well, you gotta look at it at least. There we go. Let's keep moving on. Look at that. That's a goddamn delicate barrage. Look at those beautiful pendant flowers. Jesus. Ah. Oh, the color on it too. Plus those leaves, those glaucus leaves, alternate glaucus leaves. Those got like a club shaped filament. Five yellow anthers in a club shaped filament. The calyx is notable too. Rather elongated sepals, elongated and narrow. Five anthers, club shaped filament. Five fused petals, and then at the stigma, you got a thrip, a thrip or some shit crawl on at the its style. The tiniest little stigma up top. Get the fuck out of here. Fucking flies and mosquitoes. Just getting, just getting mobbed. Then over here we got a uh, arnica. Look at those opposite leaves. One series of phyleries. And glandular. Looks like, uh, looks like arnica molus. Each leaf's got a pedestal about inch and a half long. All covered in the hairs and the trichomes and the glands. You got a couple in there interspersed with the aquilegia, the columbine, and the goddamn... Geranium viscosissum and what the shit. Oh, this is nice. So now we're at a bar. Little ways, little ways down the road. Got tons of good shit here. Tons of good stuff coming up. You can see you got that the corn lily. You got a species of erigeron right there. You got your arnica. Your arnica mollus, and you got this weird bastard over here. Fucking hemi parasite too. Pedicularis growing landica. Flower's a little old, just about finishing up, but uh, you can see why they call it elephant head. Still a stunner in its own right. Look at that. Let's get down. Let's look at this guy. What the shit is going on with those flowers? Another hemiparasite from the paintbrush family, Oral Benkesi. Who's, who we get stuck in here? And this guy over. It sounds like two flies, two uh, deer flies are trying to fuck. That's nice. As long as they're doing that and not, not biting me. So let's look at the morphology that the pedicularis grow in Landica. You can see those anthers, those four anthers are hiding in the head of the elephant and then the trunk of the elephant. See, I pulled the corolla off. There's the, uh, the style, little red hair like style. That uh, the trunk of the elephant conceals that the red hair like style. You can see I pulled the corolla out of the calyx right there. So those uh, anthers are, of course, those stamens are, of course, fused to the uh, corolla. Something's biting me. Something's goddamn biting me. Anyway, there you go. Very weird flower morphology. So the insects have to crawl up under that flap into the elephant head. You come in contact with those stamens, and uh, and in that uh, style, the stigma is just poking out of that, that elephant trunk. Very bizarre, very bizarre. But what a goddamn beautiful flower, huh? Look, you still you still got a shooting star going off. 
they threw these a 2015 paper threw these into the genus primula now but i'm just going to disregard it because it was a stupid choice you know they were just doing that because they didn't want to split the genus primula up looks like uh, dodecathia uh, tentandra tetrandra excuse me see how they got four four petals right there buzz pollinated these guys Buzz pollinated. Look at that anther tube. Ooh. There's the leaves down there. Fleshy. They're normally the first to bloom. Yeah, they threw it into Primula. Because they said it was, you know, because it's basically nested within Primula. It probably, uh, the whole genus probably speciated out of uh, Primula suffrutescens, which is in the Sierra Nevada. But, uh, you know, that's that whole reciprocal monophyly thing. If that was going to be its own genus... Just according to the rules of taxonomy, they would have had to split like three or four genera out of uh, the genus Primula too. So I just, you know, whatever. It's still to Kathian. When you lump shit together, you conceal the evolutionary and ecological story. Which, you know, is a shame. It's a fucking mess. Now every time you look up, I mean, there's obvious differences between that and Primula. Primula is not buzz pollinated. Totally different morphology when you're looking up close at the sexy parts. This is a this is a really nice plant over here, and it's all over. They're just those are done flowering. Really wonderful plant. This is Wyethia helianthoides. And look at that, a white flowered Wyethia. Look at that. You still got the coline leaves. Jesus Christ! Look at all the hair on that thing. Ooh, it's so hairy. These are still going off probably because they get more shade than the ones uh, further out in the meadow. They just uh, have had a little bit more time to roast. Look at that. Look at those Corollas. All those tiny flowers grouped together in there with those beautiful five-lobed Corollas and those brownish anther tubes sticking out. Only one, see that curly Q shape? Only one is in the female phase right now. Ready to receive pollen. And look at the phyleries on this. Look at how woolly. Ah! Oh! Look at it. And if they weren't flowering, if the fucking daisies weren't flowering, it just looked like, uh, you know, you maybe not, maybe wouldn't even notice it. You know, when you're driving, driving across the road. Down the way. What are you doing? Well, he's always doing such weird. I think he's getting bit by the horse flies too. I'm right there with you, Jack. Look at this. Hot volcanic tailless on the ground. But you dig deep, you dig six inches down. I bet it's wet. We still got that. I what's that look like? Epilobium again? Another epilobium going off? Or Gaophytum? Evening primrose family, those little dainty fuckers. God, what a great plant. The white flowered Wyethia. I guess I just I didn't I didn't expect it to be so hairy. <laughs> Sounds kind of filthy when you say it like that. Do you shave? Huh? You don't need to shave. God damn, look at that. Because we're higher up. Huh? Maybe more intense UV. Just, you know, the mountain daisies. So many of them got yellow flowers. It's so odd to see one with white. What was the adaptive benefit of doing that? Or was it just random? Just the random mutation that uh, that worked for it. Obviously big among uh, the pollinators, though. They're loving it. What a cool little print. It'd be cool to grow this guy out. You got hairs on the leaves, too. Not glabrous, not just the wax. You got tiny hairs in there. Got your tiny hairs. Love this genus. Never seen a white flowered one. See, and there's those seeds. That the phytomelanin pigment in them, that black pigmentation. The same stuff you see in sunflower seeds. But they're not quite ready yet. But they're in there. You could see them. Look at how big the pale is. See those leaf bracts that. Those leafy bracts that enclose each one. The paleo. This polygonaceous bastard. It smells like feet. Those tiny little flowers. God, it smells terrible. I mean, it smells kind of sweet. But it does indeed 
kind of smell like feet. Look at this. My friend Matt gave me this hat. It's his, uh, it's his little landscaping company. But I like that it's digital camo, right? Because it's good, you know? It's crime pays, but Bonnie doesn't code switching. You're out here. They see you wearing this. They say, oh, look. Look, he's a white guy. Maybe he's a little brown. Little Got a little bit of brown, a little caramel in him, but he's, he's a white guy. He's got digital camo on. He's one of us, right? He's not going to be, he's not some uh, commie socialist uh, Antifa supporter tree hugger coming out here to fluoridate the water supply. All right, let's keep moving on. Look at that. Look at this plant. Remember the Phlox family, Polymoniaceae. This is a white flowered variant uh, in the genus uh, Ipomopsis. A white flowered variant of an otherwise uh, pink species, like you could see up there. Well, it's kind of a white pink. See, the Corolla tube is pink. But the actual uh, Corolla, once it's busting out, they're white. You know, lacy foliage. Lacy and hairy. Fuzzy calices. Fuzzy calices. I love, I, to see a feel of these things going off. What a, what a cool Ipomopsis, man. What a cool member of the Phlox family, Pulmoniaceae. And those, those glands, it's not just hairs, you got glands on there too. With all the terpenes in there, and it kind of smells like cannabis. Kind of smells like weed. You got to get down in there. So the beard of flies got to get down in there or have a long proboscis to get down in there. Could be moths too. And then that Corolla falls off, leaving the style behind. Like yay, like you got there, leaving a style behind. You get a little capsule fruit. Oh yeah, who doesn't love bitter root? Luisia rediviva, Montiaceae. But the same order as cactus, spinach, and beets, Caryophyllales. Look at how branched that stigma is. Pretty notable, huh? And those little uh, pink anthers in there. Look at that. Where'd the leaves go, huh? Just got that uh, energy uh, energy storage down there in that root. Sends his leaves up, then closes up shop. Look, someone got a little Christy up here on the ridge. Little Christy, right? Don't necessarily need that. You know, Christ is probably, he's probably a good guy, right? Probably a good guy, but, uh, you know, some really warped shit's been done in his name. There's some fucking lunatics out there, some kooks, right? Do you need to put that there? Maybe somebody died, though. Could be someone died. I'd like to think that's it. Maybe just somebody died. Anyway, here's more of that bitter. There's an open flower on that, the bitter root. Luisia Reda Viva. Church of Satan's gonna try to put the... And I'm just had a dark lord up here too. <laughs> You're gonna gonna have an opening ceremony with some uh, some thrash metal. Just, I mean, really, just people. There's just too many. You know, there's just too many of them. Let me try to just get avoided. You know, avoid them. Get away from them at all costs. Anyway, that's nice. You could see a whole lot of nothing. You can get away from them out there. Can't get away from the deer flies though. Can't do that. Got a nice updraft. Got a very nice updraft coming up this little slope. Imagine the stuff growing up there. Talk about Alpine Rock Garden. Holy shit. Hermogeny. Caryophyllaceae. Got a helianthella, looks like. Those opposite leaves, but still so dry. Nice castilea again. Got areogonum. Aphids going to town on it. Hopefully something's there to eat the aphids. Let's see, that almost looks like a little viola. It's 
some rock. Nice rhyolite. Rhyolite with phenocris in it. I like my rhyolite with phenocris in it. That kind of looks like a dog dick. Just poking out the ground. Not to be crude or anything. Ariagonum. Heracloides. Get the whirl of, whirl of leaves out midway up the stem. Nice nectar source for the pollinators. Don't know how they're going to fly up here, though, with that uh, nice updraft coming from down below. Got your Castilea still, that yellow paintbrush. Little pygmied uh, artemisia, pygmied sagebrush. All on the volcanics. How about that? You got a monardella, coyote mint. Not going off yet, though. Smells good. Opposite leaves, mint family. Let me AC. Nice lupin, too. So high. Little viola. No flowers yet. And look, we get high enough up, and that little viola is flowering. That little violet. Don't get too ant on these guys. At least not in North America. In, Ch in Chile, in the fucking Andes, they're insane. They're crazy. They're rosalate. They form little rosettes, almost like succulent. But, but here... You know, it's just kind of meh. I mean, I still appreciate them. I'll document them, but, you know. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Look, you still got some snow down there. The drying west, the increasingly arid west. I wonder what it's going to look like. I wonder what this mountain range specifically is going to look like in 50 years. Look at all the dieback among the pines right there. Balsam roots doing all right. The balsam horizon. Landscape's changing. Better get used to it. Increasingly drier summers, increasingly hotter, drier summers. I bet 15 years ago, this time of year, there was still snow all over this hillside right here. Now you got little patches. It's a dry winter, too. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you got something out of that. Have a good rest of your afternoon. Go fuck yourself. Bye.